especially with this podcast, you know, because I think it is for you about meeting people. And so for that, I say, fuck the production. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> we then, were running fireside chats out of our freaking garage. Like, yeah, yeah, we yeah, yeah. had no production. So it was the intention was pure. And I think if the intention is pure and it's executed in a way that's thoughtful and considerate of others, then I, I really don't think you can lose. You're listening to The Real You. Thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary in all of us. My name is Dooley, and this podcast is in partnership with Pocket Change, the social platform built to show the real you. Who are you and what makes you you? Oh, hmm. Okay. Who am I? My name is Gertie Harris. Um, I'm the founder of Fireside at Five. Um, and I've lived in Denver for over eight years now. I moved here from Chicago, Illinois, from the northern suburbs, which I know you're quite familiar with. Um okay. I went to the University of Denver for undergrad and had a great time and just never left. So I'm still here. But um, what makes me me? I think what makes me me is my spontaneity and my impulsiveness, which can be, you know, both a benefit and a flaw, but uh, my excitement for life and just kind of wanting to always meet people and talk to new fresh faces. I think that's kind of the epitome of what Fireside at Five encompasses. And when we started building it out almost two years ago, it was kind of how do we make ourselves a community centric place for people to gather and find catharsis and connections. And I think that's kind of the epitome of who I am and what I represent is I always just want to meet new people and explore and, and learn. And um, and so, yeah, I would say that's that's what makes me me. Oh, yeah. Well, I could second that more excitement for people. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so even kind of, Jumping off of that, um, the reason why that just popped into my mind coming into this call was uh, when we talked on the phone the other day, we had mentioned talking about kind of imposter syndrome in a way. And yeah. it's something that's actually been sticking in my mind even these since you brought it up. Um, but yeah. I think it's a lot of things, it's something that a lot of people go through in various ways. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. I kind of want to just talk about that from, from your perspective or what does that even mean to you, like imposter syndrome? Um, I think imposter syndrome, and this is something I've obviously talk to you about, I've talked about this um, in therapy with my friends, kind of anybody. Uh, I think it's sort of this, this feeling of like self-doubt of like, I don't think I'm supposed to be here and somebody else could be doing this better than me. Um, I think a lot of what I've learned, cause I'm pretty young, I'm, I'm 25. And I think what Fireside has been over the last years, I mean, we, I started it when I was 23. So I was really young, like pretty much right out of college. Um, And it's a lot of kind of this fake it till you make it. And like, I don't know how else to describe it other than sometimes you just feel like you're faking it. And then you're like, but do I really know what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Um, And that's where that imposter syndrome comes out in me is, you know, I'm I'm always like, you know, why are people listening to me and why (laughs) I'm young? What, What do I have that they don't already have in their back pocket? Right. But I think that's almost like the catch 22 of like what I do have is that I'm young and that I have original ideas. And so whenever I find myself, um, you know, with doubt creeping into my mind, I always remind, um, you know, my inner brain, like, Hey, like you're here for a reason. And, um, all this hard work you've put into building this company is, is what has gotten you here today. And so ultimately, uh, instead of thinking it of, I shouldn't be here, I just think of it as gratitude and I try and flip the script a little bit and lean into the gratitude side of how incredible that my mind can take me to these places and that I have the personality to connect with such creative individuals in the community that can help leverage my skill sets and bring me into new projects. And, you know, how much gratitude I have for my team, my fireside team that's helped propel this forward. So, Anytime that doubt creeps in and I feel that imposter syndrome, I just try and shift it a little bit to gratitude. I think that's a great way to approach it too, because I guess from my perspective, um, it kind of feels like I just don't quite get how the world works, if that makes sense. And then I come into my own world with that. And whether it be doing the startup stuff, the music stuff, it's like, like, does anyone really know what's going on here? Like it seems like, and I talk to friends where, they go into work and then they kind of do their stuff or like send some emails and kind of finish. They're like, yeah, I don't really do shit for work today. I'm like, what is like when you really pull up <laughs> those moments over the year, like what is anyone really doing? Uh, yeah. I think that's where I start to get it is like, am I just kind of crazy half the time or is it as, am I overcomplicating like the simplicity of just 
if you just do stuff, then you're actually doing it. And therefore it is what it is. Um, so I, don't know, I guess that's sort of how I've kind of <laughs> dabbled with the thought is just, I don't know if anyone has it figured out and it seems like that's itself is just a made up concept. Well, and that's sort of like, even when you fake it till you quote unquote make it, like I could say that Fireside's made it in two years. Like we have steady income, we have great clients, we have a full team of staff. Like that to me feels like we've crossed a threshold and or a finish line, but then it becomes this whole nother level you have to get up to, right? Like you get to your what you think is your goal. And then you're like, I got to set another goal and I got to jump to that point. And that takes a whole nother level of convincing yourself that you can do that. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't think the imposter syndrome goes away. I don't think that the fake it till you make it ever goes away because you're kind of always going to be faking till you make it to the next step of your career or of this journey that both you and myself are on. Um, But I can totally relate to that feeling though of of like your day-to-day tasks. Is this really it? Is this all I have to accomplish? And then I'll get to that next level. I think yes and no. I think it's just a lot of hard work um, and, you know, preparing yourself to be in the right moment at the right time, if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Meeting the moment when it it comes to you and being ready to step up and take it and, 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 you know, do your best and put your best foot forward. But yeah, no one can really prepare you for entrepreneurship entrepreneurship or any of what comes your way as a small business owner how do you think it plays into kind of like self-identity versus expectations of others Um, like in terms of imposter syndrome or just completely separate imposter syndrome so kind of the idea that when I look at myself it's like I know that there's these certain things I'm really good at or able to do and excel in and find excitement in. And then there's the subset of things that the outside world might be looking at me and saying like, Oh, are you doing all of the things or how is it all coming together? And so there's kind of this balance of like knowing myself and what Mm -hmm. I can execute versus how I have to present or share that with the world in the way that they might expect. Um, yeah. So I guess I'm just wondering about that question for you because I have some more thoughts on it, but yeah. That's interesting. Um, I think anyone that knows me and Connor could totally attest to this knows like I am so hard on myself. My expectations for myself are like through the roof. Hmm. So I can almost guarantee that whatever the expectation from the client is, mine is higher. Hmm. Like that's the period. That's period. And I, it's gotten me into trouble before where like my expectations for friends or relationships or employees even is just so astronomically high. But I always say, I'm like, if I'm willing to lay that much out there and perform at that level, then I expect that from you too. And we can have fun while we do that. It's a work. It's, you know, it's like work hard, play hard is the the motto of our company. But Mm -hmm. um, I would say the expectations that come from others, I would rather myself be even a step above, above that so that I know I'm never disappointing them. Because yeah, that yeah, is yeah. like my biggest fear is letting people down. Mm-hmm. We're not performing at a level that's satisfactory. And so if I can just make sure that my level of work is above whatever kind of expectation or standard they might have for me at a first glance, then I'm, I'm you know, crossing my T's, dotting my I's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does cool. that make sense? Kind of? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Because I, I think about it, because um, yeah, there's like the client sort of outside thing. And then to your point of high expectations of yourself, like I feel the same way, but I think where I get, it's kind of disconnected say for example with starting to do these kind of podcast recording things right yeah what do i actually value and consider this to be a good thing it's like okay how do i actually make myself fully present you know shutting off phone other sorts of things coming in just being aware around how to be open-minded and think about the conversation but then there's the side of it which is oh you're doing a podcast right like do you have the microphone set up how's your audio thing where you just just what's your distribution what's the brand behind it but it's kind of like this weird thing where I'm like, I don't care about all that stuff as much as I right. care about just bringing my best self forward and creating an open platform for right. other people to feel comfortable and talk about interesting ideas. And so I get into this weird kind of imposter yeah, imposter feeling of like, am I, is this really a podcast? If I don't have the mic set up and the brand and the distribution versus no way, this is actually really me taking my time and energy into something that I care about and care about in the terms of relationship with people and then also sharing ideas into the world. Um, so I guess that too is where I find a lot of struggles, like these expectations of what 
a brand or a product or a thing is supposed to be versus the expectations of myself. Like, am I at least putting my best version of what I believe? I think that's interesting. I have two thoughts on that. First is the expectations <clears throat> that you set for yourself. Mm-hmm. No one can change that. That's a you thing. Like you're going to set those, you know what your level is that you can produce, right? I think those expectations can sometimes in in a negative way term, turn into parameters because you're so bogged down by like the nitty gritty and the minutia of like, is my mic the perfect quality? Is the sound good? Is like the format, the right style? Like that becomes sort of something that's going to deter the growth and expansion of this because you're still trying to figure out what this yeah. is going to be, right? So I think the other thing to look at is goals. Mm -hmm. And like, ultimately I always, when I, when people ask me stuff, like, should I make this decision or this decision? I'm like, well, what's your out, what's the goal that you want to, what's the outcome? Is it, you want to make this a business and you need to monetize this product and the level of production is completely going to matter because Mm -hmm. you're trying to sell this to some kind of producer that will pick it up or a podcaster. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or is the goal just to like truly talk to people Mm -hmm. and like build a community and start to build network and like meet new people that can help you propel and grow your career Mm -hmm. with or without this project. Mm -hmm. And so like when you take a step back and you really look at it from like, what's the outcome I'm trying to achieve? That's how Mm -hmm. I typically make decisions. And so, you know, I would, I would, um, recommend you do that exercise for yourself yeah, yeah. especially with this podcast you know because I think it is for you about meeting people and so for that I say fuck the production yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, we were running fireside chats out of our freaking garage like yeah, yeah, we yeah, yeah. had no production so it was the intention was pure and I think if the intention is pure and it's executed in a way that's thoughtful and considerate of others and I, I really don't think you can lose yeah 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 and that no I mean even you saying that stuff with some of the goals I do think about Okay, so this project with the podcast and I want like I want this to be an ongoing thing, but that's also where it's like, okay, wait a sec, this isn't a direct, you know, we have our direct business needs of are people downloading and using pocket change? Are we growing? Right. So there's kind of a a relationship too with even balancing my own work and time on stuff, which like I can still do this, but then there's other time that I have to still work on the direct, like tangible business goal of our people hearing about pocket change or signing up for it, or are we getting um, more advanced in that sort of realm? Um, But yeah, that's actually a good kind of reminder on the goal and like self-awareness of what it is I'm actually working on. Yeah. I mean, for anything too, marketing decisions, I had, I was talking to somebody last night and they were like, should we ticket an event or not? Um, I said, what's your goal? Is it PR? Is this a PR event or is this a revenue driving event? And they said, it's PR. We need eyeballs on this product. I go, then don't ticket it. Let people come in for free, right? If yeah, it's a yeah, revenue yeah. driving event, then ticket it and know mm-hmm. that you're going to get less participation because you're going to put a steep ticket price in. Mm-hmm. If it's like you just want press and buzz and you want people in the community to come out to this, then then you know that you shouldn't ticket it. And, and yeah, if it's yeah. a mix of both, then you find a balance. But like that really set him straight. And he was like, you're so right. Like that totally makes sense. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I always just back things up to the goal, the ultimate yeah, outcome yeah. that we're trying to achieve and simplify it that way. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, on kind of another topic too, um, something that I just think is, doesn't get quite talked enough about from a entrepreneurship sort of founder standpoint. Um, how have you seen it affect your relationship with friends throughout the two years? So there's kind of the starting point of Fireside and then where you're at now. And you've obviously gone through many different ways of growth in your own self. Like how have you seen that transition in your relationship with friends? Um, Really good question. Something I've really worked on again in therapy. Um, Cause this is really hard. It's, and I talked to, you know, Anna Zespa, you chatted with her recently too. She's a really close friend of mine. We both went to DU together and we both launched business concepts like around the same time a couple of years ago. And so she's kind of been like my closest confidant when it comes to like another female entrepreneur that really gets the day-to-day grind and like what it takes to build something like this from the ground up. Um, and so I've, I've had to reflect a lot of my friendships, especially because Fireside started as like a networking platform, essentially Mm -hmm. my, my network and circle grew like astronomically within the last two years. So it became a like kind of you know, who are my people that I really want to keep around because they're like my lifelong friends that have always been there and supported me. 
And then like, where do I want to make room for people to come into my circle with Mm -hmm. the expansion of this company? And like, you know, what are the friends that I'm looking for at this point in my life? Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely think my friends from college, because I went to DU, like they're all local and they're always going to be in my, in my circle. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I've, I keep really closely in touch with my high school friends as well Mm -hmm. that are kind of back in Chicago, you know, but outside of that, I really do look for friends nowadays that are challenging to me that push me, um, inspire me, um, and make me want to learn more and be a better person. And so, Mm -hmm. I'd say like, that's kind of the criteria that I look for in my friends. And again, like I've said this before, I have really high expectations for myself, which Mm -hmm. means I have really high expectations for the people around me. And Mm -hmm. like, that's kind of non-negotiable. And like, I used to feel really bad about having such high expectations. Uh, And then I realized like, no, that's just like a standard. And that's just like a level of like where I want my circle to be at. And if they can't Mm -hmm. meet that, it's not something they've done wrong. It's not like, I don't like them because they can't get to that level. It's just like, Mm -hmm. we're in different, we're on different timelines right now and everyone's going to be growing at their own pace. Mm -hmm. Um, and so for me as an entrepreneur with very few entrepreneurial friends, like I've, my circle now has grown into like, I have like Desiree Gold, who's like one of my, you know, best Mm -hmm. friends out here. And like, she's just crushing it. And like Anna, and like, I think about all the people that I work with on a day-to-day basis, you know, like even you, Lily Kai, like these people that have kind of come into my life in the last year and like they're grinding and they're pushing and they're like doing these things that I see and I respect. And that makes me want to be a better person, but also just like jump on the bandwagon and join them and cheer Mm -hmm. them on. And so I get really excited about friends who have passion and entrepreneurship that's kind of just like ingrained in them, but also just people that want to have a good time. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I I definitely think my friendships have changed over the last two years. I've had to let go of friends and I've had to make room for new ones. But ultimately, I think that's kind of part of growing up. I don't think we're supposed to have the same friends our entire life. I think there's people that come for seasons and reasons. And Mm -hmm. I try not to think of things as an attachment where I hold on to them and I can't let them go. I think of it as like, Mm -hmm. you know, you come in and you leave and if and the goal is to keep as many friends as possible, but I also want to maintain like really strong, healthy, intentional relationships. And you can't always do that with so many people in the mix. Yeah. 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 No, I feel that completely. Also on the the high expectations thing. um, I think it's, it's a great way to put it because it's also not high expectations of like all my friends have to be people or grinders or this or that, but it's like high expectations and like, listen, I need, some space to focus on my own work stuff or like if we're gonna be going out like let's all you know go out and be in a good open energy where we can talk about stuff you know like the yeah. expectation out of <laughs> the path it's not like I need, yeah. yeah I need you to be a CEO at 20 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's not what I'm saying it's more of like I am passionate about my work and I'm passionate about my friends and I want to be surrounded by people that feel equally as passionate about those things so the high expectation thing comes into play when And I have a lot of friends that are like really stagnant in their jobs right now. And they're like, I want to do something new Mm. as a high expectation friend. I'm like, fucking quit that job and find something new that makes you. Yeah. 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 Right. Go after it. Don't just talk about how you're going to switch this up, Mm. like do it, change something in your life and make that change and make that um, decision. I think that's more of like where my high expectations come. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah. hear people talk about how miserable they are. I want them to actually physically do something about it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I kind of even with thinking about that idea and then where even the whole concept of this podcast came in was I fuck with people who fuck with shit. So it's like, yeah, I like so many different things, whether it's the music, nerding out and the business stuff, like, yeah. I like food, travel, Then there's people, you know, some video game stuff that's fun, whatever it is, I don't really care. But what I found is I end up being close with people who have an energy towards something. So it's not even that like we're always into the same stuff, but it's that I'm surrounded by people who are into things. And I think that's too is kind of the little expectation side of it, which is like if you're just kind of passively going about your life and and don't even enjoy it, like if you are having a great time chilling, doing nothing then fuck yeah, you love to chill and do nothing. I'm yeah. and homies with you. Like, let's go kick it and do nothing. But if yeah. you're kind of in that like miserable self deprecating kind of like, mindset, it sort of, it like drained at your own energy or something. And I think that's where I kind of. It's yeah, it's exactly that. It's like, 
I want to be surrounded by people that really bring out the best in me and continue to inspire me. And like, I think I find sometimes in relationships that like, I get to be that person for others. And so I think I always crave that. I'm like, who's that for me? Like, where are those people that I get to look at and be really inspired by? And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, I think also like I'm looking for friends that are older. Like, again, I'm young and I'm kind of an old soul. So like, I want to find like friends, especially mentors, like mm-hmm. that are female entrepreneurs that are like 35, like good 10 years older than me that just have yeah. a little more life experience. I think like, I would learn a lot from those types of people. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I was going to say my actual same thing with my kind of life coach therapist. Um, his name's Greg, but he's essentially become sort of that person in my life too, where he's yeah. you know, older, has wife and kids and everything, but um, it's kind of like a person to just bounce off of in terms of my thoughts, ideas, his sort of experiences, whatever it might be. Um, but yeah, it's just like, that feeling too of having kind of uh, friends that kind of bring different energies yeah. forward. Again, I love doing the fuck boy shit, get hammered on the weekends. And I love focusing yeah, in. We all that. do. We all do. Yeah. <laughs> and then going in and like zoning in, nerding out on work, not hang out with anyone for four days. Like yeah, there's both sides of that to me as a human. And so, yeah, to the age thing, I've also found those people bring out different interests that I also have but can't always talk to everyone about and i think it's about really being uh communicative with your friends about those expectations like i'm not gonna tell my friends i'm not gonna like have these expectations for them and then like not (laughs) express that to them in advance like they know how i feel about things um and yeah i mean i like ultimately too like I don't know. I I think we are really lucky to live in a city with a lot of creative people that are kind of always looking for friends. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm open to all, all new friends. 